Și de exemplu, așa cum ce vei în aici box. Dar nici nu vedem de asta. Și de exemplu, într-o altă cună. Dar au să ai de a-i face cu If you the period of time, and the muscle core is a lateral or extra bone space. Then one more thing, one more thing we have to what is the superior organ efficient? What is superior organ efficient? And other is the inferior organ efficient. And one third is the orbital apex. Third is the orbital apex. So tumor can go to the superior organ efficient or inferior organ efficient. They can separate. And third is the orbital apex. Because orbital apex you have three tenures coming, third, fourth, and sixth. So they definitely can infiltrate the that called the muscle balance in the eye. So we go beyond this next step. <coughs> then so next. So clinical history is the very important thing. Clinical history is the very important thing. Then the regional examination. Regional examination means local examination. Eye examination. Third is the systemic examination. Then the imaging techniques, any investigations, then the treatment or histopathology. We have to understand. So histopathology, clinical history, what is the last in the history? <coughs> what what you ask in the history? In the history you will ask how long is it here? Is it associated with pain? Or is it associated with the proclosis, uh, bulging of the eye? Proclosis or bulging of the eye? So all these things you have to take in our history. Even when you feel it's there, when someone is... Hello, are you, are you, are you? Oh! No, 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 no. So, why do you think that it's a systemic condition which is infiltrated in the eye? Like the metastatic condition. Like yes, metastatic from some other organ in the body. Like toxic, like food, like uh, neuroblastoma. That, then we have to take that history of the systemic examination. That's the system image, examination. Imagine we have three modalities. Imagine we have two One is ultrasound, second is CT, and third is the MRI. So these three things. So then we have poorly clinical, clinical diagnostical investigation, clinical radiological diagnosis. Then after that we can do a specific investigation. Suppose some we think it is sarcoma, bone marrow sarcoma in the eye. We will do a big peak medical gallery. Okay? Or we will do a bone marrow If we think it is a neuroblastoma, then we can do a abdominal scans, a like that. So, depends upon what you think, according to what you do. The surgery depends. Surgery depends what the human life. Then the histopathology is very really important because on this depends upon what? The progress of the disease. Problem, progress of the disease. Next. So, if we take the history, we have to remember the species. How many? Six feet. Six feet. And first the pain. Generally, if it is a affected pain, that means it's infected in the nose. Okay? So any carcinoma can cause pain. Any benign thing is less likely to cause pain. So pain is very important. Then the progression, whether the how much progress progression of the flow, whether it was acute within days, or it was subacute within weeks, or it was chronic. Within months, so that also tells us the disease entity, whether it is benign or it is malignant. Then the third is very important progression, whether it was rapid, some tumors are very rapidly progressing, some are slow, some are indolent. So, progression also you have to ask <coughs> and see it by calibre, by scale, or there is one more instrument that is called. Hurtulous exophthalmometer. Hurtulous exophthalmometer. That is documentation. How much is the eyeball forward and other eye? Okay? So then you, you can do a palpation of the mass. And you can see the pulsation. You can see the pulsation or any periodical change. What do you mean by pulsation and periodical change? Pulsation means that it is pulsed out. 
Then we have the extracoronal and the intracoronal. Intracoronal have we have towards the like optical glioma or optical meningioma, optical glioma or optical meningioma. So anything which affects the optical will affect the vision. Anything which affects the vision that will affect the peripheral reaction. So these two things will be compromised in such tumors, vision and peripheral reaction. And what is not affect the nerve of the nerve will not affect the vision or the peripheral reaction. So intracoronal regions are more likely to affect the vision. Then the extracoronal, we can have so many things. Basically, there are so many varieties. Suppose in children, if you see, see, there are. Cysts, there are cysts, there are cysts. Then there can be vascular, vascular tumors. There can be lymphatic tumors. There can be uh, the capillary type of hemant tumors. There, there can be lymphatic tumors. Okay. There can be muscle, muscle, muscle related tumors. That way as well tumors. Okay. There can be you know, adenosis cysts. Benalysis. So I will elaborate on these things now. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, that affects a blue shoe or a red shoe in the lips. Okay? There's a red shoe in the lips. That's a temporary that's present at birth or soon after birth. Then we can have a dermoid cyst. Then we can have a dermoid cyst. Dermoid cyst is a what is the dermoid cyst? Peritoma or a stone. So if there is no gene, that of the cyst you can see with the regular mobile. So it can be in the adherent of it. Or it can be in the middle of it, or it can be in the posterior of it. So if it's anterior, it will not cause much problems. But if it is the posterior, that will cause actual problems. So again, the treatment is for the removal of the tumor, actually, because it drives the tumor side. So one more cyst is there that is called the congenital cyst. Sometimes it is the congenital cyst, the eye call is the replaced by cyst for it. And there is globum and other. It's called a developmental cyst, congenital cyst. There is no eye problem. There is a cyst also. There is a problem in the optical vessel diffusion. There is a problem in the optical vessel diffusion. In that we do an expression of the cyst because that is malignant potential. And the high school eye or small eye becomes prominent. One day the cyst, suppose there is a cyst in the lower bit. And there is a high school eye. We will aspirate the cyst, the high school eye will become prominent. So that's one more system. Then we have <coughs> anangiomas. Then we have anangiomas in the children. What type of anangiomas we have? I told you, there's a capillary anangioma. Okay? What is treatment for the capillary anangioma? Capillary anangioma is very good here. We will give you chemolog. Uh, okay, protonolog. Not chemolog, protonolog. Okay? Some people give a gel of protonol. Okay? Then you can give steroid injections in the capillary anemia. Or you can, uh, you can give an embolization therapy also. So, but not sclerosis in the type of therapy. Sclerosis for residents or not? Only the uh, embolization or the steroid or a protonol, beta blocker. Yeah. Okay, probably. Then next is the lymphoma. <coughs> Again, it's more common in the children. Lymphoma is more common in the children. And it becomes cyst. It forms cyst. In a way, it is dangerous because it affects the optic nerve, it can affect the muscles, it, can, it becomes blocked type of thing. To fiddle with this is very dangerous. And sometimes what happens is there occurs a bleeding in these cysts. There occurs a bleeding in these cysts. And when there occurs a bleeding, it can cause an acute onset process. So acute onset process, one of the causes is a bleeding in a lymph 
endolysis. Okay? In that, uh, uh, the region will do an aspiration by cell of that blood. Okay? Or we can, we, do, uh, we can put some injection. What type of injection? Tumors. 
What is? In the children is the most common. Dermoids. Benign tumor is the dermoids. And the malignant tumor is the rhabdomyosis. Okay? Dermoids is the most common benign tumor. And rhabdomyosis are the most common benign tumor. And in the adults, the most common tumor is cavernous and in the Cavernous and in the So, in adults, we have cavernous and in the Then we can have meningioma. Then we can have eosinophilic granuloma, that bone tumor, that normosis. Then we can have the lymphoma tumor can affect the elderly. Okay? One more important tumor in the elderly or adults is the lacrimal gland. Both benign, eudemorphic adenoma, and and malignant. What is that called? Endocystic carcinoma. Endocystic carcinoma. That's the most common of the malignancies in the lacrimal gland is adenocystic carcinoma. Then we have one more thing is uh, we can have meningioma. We can have meningioma. Meningioma can be within the orbit or it can be higher in the CNC which will infiltrate the organ. So meningioma will affect the sheet of the optic nerve. Okay, and there will be calcification in that. There will be calcification of the CT or MR. So any calcification will tell us it, it, it is a meningioma. The important adenoma is the mass of the supra temporal, the lacrimal fossa. This is called lacrimal fossa. So it's a mass here. This is regular. Okay? So it does not cause any pain. It's asymptomatic. A pain is mass. Okay? Then it does not, so it does not have pain. Then it does not create the food. It does not relate to who that differentiates it from the adenocystoid carcinoma. Because in adenocystoid carcinoma, there will be pain. There will be pain. Mm -hmm. And there will be there will be paresthesia. There will be paresthesia. Mm -hmm. And it will cause the midline. It will cause the midline. What will cause the function midline to cause that? Because it will infiltrate. So these two things are very important. So, but adenocystoid carcinoma can occur any age, right from 70, 80, up to 50, 60. But generally, pediopathic adenoma uh, occurs in 40, 50, 60, like that in these years. So, these are the differentiating points between the adenocystoid carcinoma and pediopathic adenoma. Okay? So, they say that 50% of the lateral tumors are benign. That means pedomorphic adenoma. And the 50% are carcinomax. Carcinomax. Out of those 50%, 50% are adenoidocystic carcinoma. That means 25%. And rest may be something else. The important thing here is to remember that since the pedomorphic adenoma does not invade this wound, it does not invade this wound. So we go for an oxygen loss. We go for it. We don't, we don't have to do a biopsy or SNAC because the retinal state will increase. So no SNAC or no increase the biopsy is to be done. We have to do the excision of this pheomorphic adenoma along with its capsule. Along with this capsule. Then in adenoid cystic carcinoma, the, there will be pain, then there will be paresthesia. So we have to see the extent of the tumor. We will have to go for the uh, removal of the tumor if it is done so close to life. But if it has not invaded the viral structure, we may have to go for the modified radiotherapy. We may have to go for the chemotherapy. So it's a plan is long in that. So in children again I will come. So the
dispense the water in four phases. Okay, it will dispense the water in four phases. It will not dispense the water. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. 